Welcome to Nitty Gritty. I'm excited for this episode. This has been a hot topic of discussion. Super hot. As of recently. It's so hot. (laughs) Sounds cooler when she says it. (laughs) Coming off some of our last guests, no one knows where we're going right now. You're right. (laughs) Oh, yeah. That's a good point. I know. we We haven't talked about it for a minute. So today our guest is Sarah Kimmel from Family Tech, right? Yep. And we get a jump into one of the most popular, I'm going to throw it, documentary up in air quotes, Mm -hmm. The Social Dilemma. This all spawned from my rant Yep, (laughs) three weeks ago or four weeks ago. (laughs) Yeah. So Uh. we talked about it a little bit like the night after you watched it. Right. And then I went and watched it that night. And then we got a phone call saying, you need to talk to someone who knows what they're talking about because you and Cam don't, basically. Whatever. (laughs) (laughs) It's we were ahead of Joe Rogan. Joe Rogan had a big thing on the social dilemma like two weeks ago. Yeah, he kind of sounded like me, just kind of <laughs> freaking out. <laughs> and so, sir, we're excited to have you here and talk about this family technology and how we shouldn't be scared of it. Yes. Because I think it's really easy to be scared, right? Yes. Uh-huh. But, I think but, we should be a little scared. Uh, Don't well, you? No. I, I mean, come on. <laughs> the wormhole that is the internet and like teenagers. The... I know what I would have done if I had a cell phone with the internet when I was 13 years old. We I mean, just... I think it's okay to say you're a little scared. No? I, I think healthy, um, I wouldn't say scared. I would say, you know, aware and, okay. you know, make sure that you know the dangers that are out there. But as you figure out how to um, manipulate that and to... Um, mitigate that danger then you'll be able to not be scared and gotcha have some confidence knowledge is power for sure i just don't feel like i can keep up those teenage brains yeah you hear all these stories about like yeah i set up a chat room through farmer the farmer game and holy crap there's some crazy stuff right people are getting really innovative right on how they do it. But before we jump into it, Sarah, I want to kind of understand your background a little bit. Sure. So talk to us a little bit how we got to where we are today with you. Sure. Um, so I've, I'm actually in IT. I've been an IT manager for over 17 years. And I, um, I'm i also a mom. So uh, my daughter is 15. My son is 11. And uh, so I've, you are right in the heart of it, <laughs> right in the thick of all <laughs> of the fun tech stuff. I mean, but honestly, they've been around technology since they were born, just as a nature of what I do. Yeah. Um, you know, once my son was in preschool and the preschool teacher came up to me, she's like, like everyone wants to know what have you done with him? And I'm like, what are you talking about? And she's like, he can read. And I'm like, oh yeah, I know. And she's like, yeah, he was in the corner. Like, and I'm like, oh, how cute he's pretending to read. And then I look and he's like actually reading. And I'm like, honestly, he has unlimited access to technology. (laughs) (laughs) I mean, and I do read with him, but I really credit, you know, applications like Starfall and, you know, things that are technology based with helping get that love of reading into his mind, you know? So, so really they've been around technology forever. We've had these conversations with them since they were little. Um, but now that we're like right in the thick of it, it's, you know, it's easier because they've been around it for so long. So like what kind of conversations do you have with young kids? Cause so my oldest is he's turning 11 soon. Oh, right. So I'm like getting to that stage, but like my youngest is four. And ever since she was a baby, like she knew how to navigate an iPhone, Mm -hmm. like, better than most adults do right. like they just kind of like come out with like they understand what the swipe means they know where to get and she'll have my phone sometimes and i'm like what did you do like how did how did you do this i don't know what's wrong i don't know where you went to do this but something is messed up right and you somehow did that so like how do you have a conversation with kids like at a young age about technology. Yeah, I actually have a blog post on my website that says, my kid messed up my computer, now what? There you go. Um, Because they do, you know, they're just messing around and they do things. So um, four years old is actually, you know, past the time you should be having conversations with them about technology. Um, I say that you should have conversations with them as soon as they have access to the internet. Um, And, you know, so at the very young age, though, you really simplify it. You say, you know, if you happen across naked mommies and daddies, you know, turn it off and come tell me or, you know, just make sure 
they're not going to have any shame or anything for anything that they might come across and make sure those conversations are super open and honest um, because, you know, eventually they will come across things like that. So having those conversations with them, even at a super young age, is really important, you know, but again, tailor it to their age level. So, you know, there's a really great book, Good Pictures, Bad Pictures, um, that really explains you know, exactly kind of what pornography is, you know, for those young kids. Um, but then, like you said, there's not much conversations you have to have with them about how to use technology, because like you said, they've got it down. Um, so it's more conversations about moderation and, um, you know, and how to use technology properly and what you should do, you know, never give out your name, never give out your age, never give out your, you know, location. Um, so a lot of these things that are really important for them to understand that they should never, ever share online. So did you kind of with your kids, it was like full access to everything as soon as they wanted it? Or was there any type of like filter or controls that you put like, no, like you're four, you don't need to get on the internet. Right. You know what I mean? Like you don't need yeah. to have full access to Safari. Right, right. Um, my house is like Fort Knox. I have multiple layers of filters and monitors and controls in place. Um, and so they understand and we're always, you know, again, super open with them. Hey, this is what's you're controlling this and this is what's filtering this. You know, I'm not going to rely on any one filter because even with Fort Knox house of IT manager, Sarah, um, <laughs> they will find a way to get around it if they really want it. And they might even come across it accidentally as well. So, um, you know, so I'm not naive to think that nothing's going to get through, but I do make it really hard for it to get through. And then, like you said, you know, we'll give them Starfall at a you know young age or you know specific website. Oh, it's a great reading website. Like okay. you know, it it can teach them their letters and numbers and everything, and like it can help them like learn how to read. Okay, um, and it, it's free. It's just yeah, you know. Then there's like ABC Mouse and things like that. So there's a lot that they can access. And like you said, I'm not going to just say, hey, go do Google search for you know whatever you want. Um, at that young age, but, and I do have filters in place and I put YouTube safe search on and, you know, when they're really little, we use YouTube kids and things like that. So yeah, definitely not unfiltered, you know, total access to all of the bad of the internet. Yeah. I feel like it's like the saying, like it was the best of times and it was the worst of times, like so applies to the internet and like technology in general. Oh, that scared me. <laughs> I triggered Google by saying <laughs> Google. So, it's like my bad. Siri. And, <laughs> but I do. I feel like it's like that because there's so much good. Like you said, like it can help your kid read. But then the flip side of that is it can also do a tremendous amount of damage. Right. Right. And so I think like for us as parents, it's always been like, how do you balance that? Like, like where do you find it? Everyone... I feel like is going to be different. Like their comfort level should be different. What they allow their kids to do is going to be different. Um, you know, like what type of technology you give them at what type of ages. I think there's a lot of like judgment that happens with people like, Oh, look at that person. Look what they've done for their kids. Or, yeah. Oh, you're trying to live in a bubble. Like that doesn't exist. Like you need to kind of expose them almost to the real world too. You kind of have the two polarizing views right. of how people address this. It's like Democrats and Republicans. Yeah. <laughs> it's exactly what it is. Right? You either let your kids see the whole world or you just shut them out. Yeah. Right? So it's kind of true. And the both sides just rip on the other side. Right. Yeah. In the middle, we're the right ones. That's right. We're right? always the right ones. Of Correct. Course. <laughs> Bunch of morons. Oh, my gosh. <laughs> so Totally agree. So as you got started, I mean, so you were in the IT space. You started blogging, mm -hmm. right? Yes. Like, how did family tech become like what like how did you get to that point yeah so um i originally my first blog was called organized mom it's still around i just don't write on it anymore i hired writers to handle that for me uh, but it, i started that as a way to drive traffic to a software program that i created that was called daily home planner um the software program was just built on desktop and at the time mobile was just starting to take off this is back in 2006 so um it was really bad timing on my part but the blog was successful but organization not really my passion so um i around 2009 i started my second site it was originally called tech for mom mommies. 
It was a play on the word dummies. Um, All those books out there, like software for dummies. Right, right exactly. Um, but nobody got it. So, <laughs> so I everyone should, was the dummy. Should have right. called it mummies. <laughs> I know, right? And, you know, we could have some Halloween themes. I don't know. Um, but so I shortened it to tech for moms. And then I got annoyed when my guy friends would comment like, Hey, you know, I know that I'm not your target market, but blah, blah, blah. Or, you know, I'm not a mom, but blah, blah, blah. And I'm like, well, my information is for everybody. So, right. um, I, I rebranded, um, probably about six or seven years ago to family tech. And so now I have family tech zone dot com um also family tech dot biz if you want to check out because i've got a podcast on there i do um you know public speaking about technology and everything so um it's all Just kind with of like branded. little companies like verizon and right right yeah dell <laughs> yeah i was just reading that i'm like oh, no yeah. biggie <laughs> yeah, so uh, Verizon, they had me do um, a, a speech to parents um, in New York and then the next day in San Francisco. <laughs> wow. So that was, uh, it took like a red eye and I almost missed that flight. It was just insane. But Wow. So what kind of stuff do they want you teaching or talking about, like a Verizon, for example? Yeah. People so who are trying to get people to be on their devices, right? right? Like that's, right, right. that's their business. They're the social dilemma. They're, <laughs> <laughs> They're the people in the little, you know brain yeah the three dudes yeah arguing back and forth oh yeah yep um i'm a huge you know buffy and angel fan and that dude is connor <laughs> yeah, yeah. from angel he's in, he's in mad men too <laughs> yeah i like that guy yeah i was like oh my gosh it's connor <laughs> um but yeah they um they want me to talk about, you know, basically giving parents the knowledge and the tools that they need in order to manage and maintain this so they don't feel scared on technology because, you know, you can stick your head in the sand and, you know, think that all technology is evil and going to, you know, be the downfall of the entire society, but it's not realistic. And, you know, people need to use technology. And what I really liken it to is, you know, you're not going to send your child off at 18 with a credit card and expect them to know how to manage money. You know, you're going to teach them how to budget and everything while you have control so that they don't, you know, make these huge mistakes. Which no one does, which is why we have the financial dilemma. Right. <laughs> that we have in the world today <laughs> right exactly but that's how you're supposed that's how it should work yeah. a whole lot of dilemmas <laughs> this really sucks so if you're able to teach your kids how to use technology properly when you have control and when you can monitor it and correct when needed then they'll be able to you know become adults when they have full unfiltered access and they'll be able to monitor and maintain themselves so what's the fine line between technology and social media, though? Because to me, it's not technology that's the problem. It's social media sure. that's the problem, right? Sure. And so, but I mean. Yeah, how do you separate that? You can't right? have one without the other. It, it almost feels like you can't have one without the other right now, at least once the kids hit like 10, you know, they start wanting it, of course, but. Yeah. Well, yeah. it is the primary form of communication for most teenagers. They're not texting anymore. They're using platforms like Snapchat and right. Instagram to communicate with each Which other. Which makes me feel so old because it's so not how <laughs> I would do it. Like I hate texting still. <laughs> let alone going to Instagram to talk to people. They're like, hey, you didn't send me this message. I'm like, yeah, I called you. <laughs> or, yeah, I don't do that either, I sent though. you a text message. Like, I'm yeah, just, but. I need to move to a farm. <laughs> <laughs> I had a pager in high school. I don't know what you're That's what I'm about. talking about. Yeah. I'll take a pager all day long. And they don't know if I'm reading it. If right. I saw it, I could say I dropped it. <laughs> anyway. But it's a, that's a really great question. Like, how do you, like, where is that line? Yeah, I mean, so there is there a line? There's definitely lines. And, you know, social media can also grow with your child. So, you know, when they're under 13, most social media platforms require the kid to be 13 to be on it. And I just cringe every time I see 10, 11, 12 oh, year olds thank you. Okay. On, <laughs> on those platforms because oh. I'm like, you literally had to say that you are over 13 to join this platform. And you know, and it's not a safe place. Why 13? For, uh, it's COPA. So COPA is the Children's Online Privacy and Protection Act. Okay. And um, it basically says at 13, they're old enough. They're to, ready for that. Right. Oh, okay. my gosh. <laughs> they're <laughs> yeah. old enough to buy things. Are any yeah. of them parents? 
Yeah, right. Well, I mean, there are actually in Heber. <laughs> we have some parents at that age yeah. back in the day, but just saying. Not at thirteen. Me. Um. He's like. Uh, um, <laughs> hold on. <laughs> it's rare, but it it's doable. Yeah. So anyway. there are people <laughs> that are trying to move that legislation legislation to like age sixteen okay. and things like that. But um. But like I said, so most social platforms, even Gmail, you have to have, you have to be 13 in order to sign up. You know, there are a few platforms that they can use younger than that. So I love um, Facebook Messenger Kids um, because it's tied to a parent's Facebook account and the parent completely controls it and they can control time limits on it. And it's still fun. It's got the Snapchatty filters and stuff. So it's fun for the kids and, you know, it's something that they can use prior to being 13. Um, so do you have that? Do you like do your kids use that stuff, or do you lock them out until they get older? Um, like yeah, Instagram and things like that. Uh, they have to be thirteen. Um, I follow the law on those. Um, Are you just saying that? No, <laughs> absolutely not. Like so, and my son really wanted Discord, which I mean, Discord. What's Discord? I don't know what that is. Son of a. Yeah. I don't even know. They just keep coming. I'm Googling it. Discord is a chat platform, and it was mainly for um, online gamers to like take their conversation offline um, outside of the game in order to like you know coordinate starting up a game or things like that. So, okay. um, but Discord is a free for all, and it like so I wouldn't let you know even my 15 year old get Discord, and I like my son was get was asking for Discord. I'm like, how old are you? He's like 11. I'm like, you can't have Discord. Like, look, the law even states. I love how they make it look old. like a little cartoon paradise. Right? Like, oh, just come in here and chat with your friends. Look, little animals, frogs. <laughs> and you say it's a total free for all. Total free for all. Like, it's probably one of the worst ones that you can let your kid have. Oh, my gosh. Um, because there's a lot, like, you, it's hard to monitor discord um bark like you were mentioning earlier um oh i don't think it was on the podcast yet I was but gonna say what what bark yeah yeah bark is a an app i i have about four or five different parental control apps that i use to monitor and control my kids right. um but uh, yeah <laughs> 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 um but bark is one of them and so bark uh what it does it monitors things like discord and your gmail and instagram for um for android devices so we'll get into android and ios in just a second but um oh this is fascinating yeah. I'm so excited <laughs> So with um, it, it can monitor all of those, and it basically just flags concerning behavior and will notify the parent phone. So what does that mean? It monitors it and flags it for behavior. Like how does it? Is it an algorithm that can actually read the conversations that's happening? Yeah, and it can also like um, digest uh, drawings too, or like you know pictures? pictures. So like my daughter's Dropbox. So my daughter's a huge artist. Like she's way better than I could even fathom being. Um, and she'll draw pictures and she draws a lot of like Pokemon and like anime stuff. And so I get flagged all the time for like violence. Um, Interesting. And so I'll look at it like, and it'll have a picture of the picture and like, you know, there's like a knife or, you know, whatever, like, or a sword because it's like a Pokemon battle. Um, she constantly gets flagged for like watching YouTube videos with violence too, that are just like Pokemon right. battles and right. things like that. Um, I killed some Pokemons around here. Right. Pokemon I'm one Go. of those. I'm one of those. What do they call it? Like one of the little hubs. Like you come here to get characters. Oh yeah, yeah. Remember yeah. when that was all big? Yeah, Pokemon yeah. Go. Yeah. Po yeah, like I don't know you how it happened. The but it was great for it business. Was a gym yeah. or something. Yeah. yeah, it was great. I had all the. But seriously, I had like grown men. Yeah. I'd walk out back, throw garbage away. Yeah. And there's like dudes like pacing behind my restaurant. And I'm like, you need to get out of here. Right. This is freaking me out. Yeah. Anyway. But yeah. So, and it'll flag things like bullying or sexual content or um, self harm. So, this is Bark. Bark, yeah. It, it will do it for any app or technology or only specific ones so it has specific ones and it will monitor more on an android device than it will on an apple device so my huge recommendation for parents is always start your kid off well i mean i actually have a flow of like the progression of communication devices to your kids 
Um, but when they do get a smartphone, hold on. Let's start with this. I want to oh, start okay. from the beginning. So this from is the a, beginning, this is really interesting. Pager. <laughs> yeah, pager <laughs> one. Well, a Walkman. <laughs> <laughs> I had a disc man. It was fine. This man is oh. It skipped all, all the time. time. I'd be on like Stupid. an airplane and it would be like, ear, ear, ear. we had to work so hard to listen to music. We so did. I mean, not as hard as like our parents. Right, right. But still, like the book of CDs in my car oh, to be cool. I had that and for they sure. got scratched. And you had to, like, I could memorize what page everything was on. And there was like, anyway, sorry, tangent. Yeah. But. And then when Napster came out and you can make like oh, your own CDs, we were criminals. So but great. it felt so good. So good. <laughs> <laughs> But yeah, so um, communication with your kids. I would start with a Relay Go, um, available at Target. It's basically just a little speaker um, that they can bring with them. It has GPS. Um, Is it like the little watches? No, that's next. Oh. But like, it's just a little, like, it looks like a little speaker. Huh. And they could put it in their pocket. Like a walkie-talkie. Or... That's cool. I've never yeah. heard about that. Yeah. Never yeah. So Relay Go okay. is that, like, or like Relay, relay so like, Go.com. At, at what age, obviously, every parent is going to have different boundaries, right? right? So what age group is this for? Um, I would say early elementary. Okay. Uh, and, you know, if they're going to be outside your house and you want to communicate with them. Right. So this is how... Click it on a backpack or something like that. Right, exactly. They go to a friend's house. That's how you get them home. Right, yeah. You know, hey, time for dinner. Got you know, it. Things hmm. like that. Okay. Um, so that's really good. Then the next step would be um, the gizmo. It's a Verizon exclusive, but it's so worth it. I like, love it. Yeah, the gizmo. Yeah, it's the best. I just got a new one for Dodger. Oh, you did. He gets it for his birthday tomorrow. That's awesome. He won't hear this in time. Not yeah. sure he <laughs> listens to this, but yeah, he totally listens but to his yeah. dad's podcast <laughs> yeah. all the time. I'm sure. Exactly right. Yeah. No, he's turning 11, but we're not ready for cell phone yet. Like yeah. we we waited till 12 with Taya. We got one of the little what's the phone? Gab. Gab. Yep. I've got a better option for you on oh, that great. one. Oh, great. Well, it's too late now. I know. <laughs> Just kidding. But, um, yeah. but yeah, so next would be the Gizmo. Okay. Um, like I said, if you aren't a Verizon subscriber, you can get just a specific account for your kid. It is slightly more expensive than if you just added them to your right. Verizon Why account. Why is it better than the other ones out aren't there? Aren't we all Verizon customers? I know, right? I, Who I is am. It? I know. There's a few at and Verizon's Verizon. What the are best. you, Brent? Don't say T-Mobile. Don't you dare. <laughs> Republic. <laughs> He's cricket. He's are Republic cricket? Wireless. Oh, I'm going to make fun of you so bad. Cricket. <laughs> what are you? I want to know. <laughs> <laughs> oh, maybe we shouldn't talk about it. I'm just kidding. Um, but yeah, it's it's really so much better. It's um, got great GPS. The device itself is fantastic. Um, you know, it just has really good features and you know they're awesome yeah they've got they they got a little better too because at mm -hmm. first we always the bands always broke because of the oh, plastic yeah. right crap the, the only thing i don't get is why are they so big they're a little smaller now yeah the I buttons are on the screen they're now. getting oh, you smaller have the ones. but yeah they're still but i mean they're bigger than my watches right and like my kids wrists are tiny it's like hello i'm sure it's because they're using cheaper like there's your four processors there's right, your forearm for sure. Yeah. There's your forearm. <laughs> it's so true. I do wish they was smaller because you know, my 11 year old is like an itty bitty boy. But right. Um, but yeah. So the gizmo would be next. Okay. Um, after that, the pinwheel phone. I do not like Gab, and here are the oh. reasons that I like don't like Gab. Um, the first is you cannot control access on it. You can't limit time. I was time. wondering that. Like, yeah. I thought there'd be like an app or something where I could see what's going on. I could control it. There's nothing like There's that. There's nothing like that, which I don't like. So they could Getting be texting. Getting rid of it today. I know. <laughs> they could be texting at all hours of night and you wouldn't know. Um, so that's one thing I don't like about Gab. Originally, it also did not have GPS. Right. I've heard it has GPS now, but... Um, yeah, the, the new ones do. Yeah. So well, that was the other say. thing I didn't like. But... But they still don't. I haven't verified yet. <laughs> but that's the thing. Like, how do you verify? Like, it's right. There's no. I thought for sure there'd be. Some, Is there not like, like a? Find I wanted like an type Overlord app on <laughs> yeah. it. Like, yeah. I want to be able to see everything that's happening in that phone. Yeah. And that's what I thought I was getting. And there's nope. nothing like that. There's nothing. So is this one pin Pinwheel? Pinwheel, yes. It has the Overlord app? It has the Overlord. Wait, there's not an app yet. They're working on it, but right. Overlord website. Okay, that's fine. Um, and you can- I like, like bigger screens anyway. <laughs> yeah. So pinwheel.com, um, it's the, like if I were to invent a kid's smartphone, that would be it. Like they nail it. Because um, like I said, I've- I am very particular about what I will promote, um, and I do not promote things that I don't like 
So I've never promoted Gab, even though it'd be perfect for my audience, like they would eat it up. But there's these features. It's way better than a normal phone, right? But what you're saying is there's better options out there. Yeah, no, I I even would, I would promote an Android that's locked down over a Gab. Interesting. Just because, and they could delete texts. I would never know that they were texting. On Gab? Little bastards. On Gab, yeah. <laughs> I know. Ugh. Criminals. They're all criminals. All the kids are criminals. <laughs> but like, so you can't monitor their text messages. Right. And I want to monitor their text messages. I'm running over this phone tonight. Yeah. <laughs> it's going to go under the Dodge. It's going to go next to that gun from yep. yesterday. Uh, yep. Wait till your exactly pinwheel right. comes and then okay. you can run over That's your That's probably cap. smart. Um, but the pinwheel is really awesome because you can set up different like time frames. So it has a very, very curated list of apps that you can toggle on and off for the phone. And you can request apps that like, you know, maybe your kid really likes, you know, this one app. So like, you know, my my family, I do also let them use Marco Polo because um, I love, love, love Marco Polo. What is with women and Marco Polo? It's the best. I don't get it. It's I don't get it. the best app ever. <laughs> like, get on board. My wife, Jenna, does it. I'm like, why are you doing that? I have so many people like, are you not on Marco Polo? I'm like, hell no. <laughs> like, I don't even like texting. Like, I don't do the well, whole that's face why you use Marco no, Polo. I, well, you I'll don't just record my voice. I don't need to be like, I don't need to be looking listen, at you. staring into a phone is hard enough. Like, seeing your face, it just, uh, like, no. Nope. Jer- Jared Jacobs, he always FaceTimes me. Always. No. And now it's a joke because it's like, me. I don't, I don't, I don't do that. Yeah. Well, see, FaceTime is hard because like, you have to be there live. Marco Polo, right. you just send it off and I can watch it whenever I want. Yeah. But so, so is a so text, beautiful. right? But, but I don't have see to see if text. someone's watched it? Yeah, I gotta. Yeah. You gotta help me with settings. I don't want any of those stupid little dots blinking. Yeah, <laughs> like I don't want anyone to know if I've looked at their text or not. Yeah, because I've probably looked at it and I forgot and I'm not responding. You leave, but I want to be able to lie. Say, I want oh, to be able to claim. I haven't ignorance. even opened it yet. My bad. <laughs> There's got to be a setting for that because I swear people sit and watch, like. Because I always like click on the name and then hurry and hit back. Oh, sure. And then click on it again because then the little cursor is not going in the, <laughs> right? Because I know people will be watching to see if I'm looking at it. I got to shut that crap down. Anyway. The kids call that leaving it on red. And, really? And that's like a bad thing. Like, well, you know, if a girl sends you a text and then you like leave it on red. Like, right? See the social pressure of that for kids? Yeah. Like they want to know if somebody's read it or not. Like, no, just send it. Go on with your day. Right? That's why you have an Android device and not Oh, we're going to get to this. I'm iOS device. Oh, we're going to have a fight. I was just about to pre-order for all the Apple. I already did. Have you seen how much cooler the Android phones are now, though? I won't look at it. It's like so, so much, much cooler. cooler. It's the same reason I won't buy Reebok or Under Armour or oh, Adidas. ever. Dude, I looked at an That's LG phone the other day. That's why you have an Apple. Like, you... You're, you're a gonna, sheep. Yeah. <laughs> bah. <laughs> I saw an LG phone the other day. It the, folds. The top thing folded oh, out. Oh, I saw that. And then a camera pops up. You can record yourself and whatever you're looking at at the same time. Unnecessary. Totally unnecessary. But, really? I mean, what if you need it someday, you know? <laughs> What if Sorry, cool we've totally happening? hijacked the conversation. Oh, it's all good. You can pry my stylus from my cold, dead hands. <laughs> you have the note? Yes. So that's the phone I used. That was all I ever had. That is way too big. Yeah. Remember when Steve Jobs said <clears throat> that nobody would use a stylus anymore? Yeah. He's e- a nerd. Everything evolves. <laughs> okay, so the pinwheel. The pinwheel, awesome. So it has super curated apps. You can request apps to be included in okay. it, um, and then you can set these different time frames. So the only these learning apps are available during school hours, or only you know these are available like you have during a lot bedtime. Of control. Tons of control. You can monitor the text messages. It's got GPS. You have time limits. Like everything that I would want a kid's phone to have. And it has so it has no internet, no social media. How does it compare yeah. pricing wise? Do you know? Um, um, I'll yeah, tell it's you around, in just a second. Yeah, it's around $150 right um, for the... Like, 250 no, Oh, no, no, no. You're right. Yeah. The little one's 150 Yeah. And then there's a rugged version. Right. For 249 Yeah. Okay. Interesting. So it's legit. Uh, I when I found it, I instantly reached out to the CEO. I'm like, "Hey, 
would love to start talking about you guys because it's awesome. Like, are you guys ready to go? Because I've I've been down this road a few times right. with other companies um, that I'm like, okay, yeah, this is great, but some of them were just a little bit ahead of, ahead of their time when parents weren't ready to give right. their you know ten year old a cell phone. Um, but pinwheels like they've got the technology right and they're at the right time, and I think they're really going to take off. So what's so what's your age? Like with this type of phone, so, where are you feeling safe giving a kid a cell phone? So Pinwheel, I think, is really good for um, really late elementary to early junior high. I don't um, know what that is. I have four children. So, what is that, like 10? Like, well, like... 11? Late elementary, probably yeah, like 11, 12? Like, yeah, 11, okay. 12, 13 even, maybe. Gotcha. Um, I think around there is perfect for Pinwheel. Um, I don't do ages, as much as I do um, readiness level. You know, that's a really important point because yeah. it is very true. Like the whole 13 thing cracks me up because <laughs> I swear they do that because yeah, they might have, you know, they have, they can get their parents to buy them stuff. Right. You know, they're certainly not really ready for much at 13, yeah. especially nowadays. But yeah, it's, you know, like my daughter, it's funny. Last night I noticed her little gab phone was just on the dining room table. Like she went to bed. Like she just doesn't. She she lo- she uses it, but it's just laying around. Yeah. Like she doesn't live on it. Right. Like I really trust her. You know, I would trust her even with a normal phone that was kind of locked down. Yeah. But but you're right. I mean, every kid is so different, and that's yeah. probably pretty important to. It is you know. like, and so for my son, I wasn't going to get him a uh, you know a pinwheel until he was able to take care of his gizmo watch. Gotcha. So like, if you're not bringing your gizmo watch to school, like, cause this is when I need to get a you know totally right. be able to get a hold of you. Right. If you're not going to bring it to school, I'm not giving you a phone. I'm doing this with my wife actually. Yeah. <laughs> I'm actually I just canceled her pre order new iPhone yesterday because she never answers the phone. When I right. Call. I'm like, why am I going to get you a new phone and pay for it <laughs> yeah. if you won't answer my phone? Yeah. Oh, drives me insane. Anyway. Sorry. Yeah. So in like, so as they prove that they can take care of the device, they're not losing it. They're, you know, bringing it when they need to bring oh, that's it. That's a great idea. Um, then they can graduate to the next level, you right. know, or if they're, you know, if they have the pinwheel, they're, you know, not wasting time on it or they're, you know doing the things that they're supposed to be doing right. on it, then, okay, okay, we can graduate you to an Android device. Okay, so hold on. Let's talk, I want to talk Android about Android device. No, I don't want to talk about that. <laughs> I want to talk about something else. You're the boss, I guess. <laughs> Go ahead. This is my show. <laughs> um, why and when do kids outgrow a pinwheel? I don't. I haven't had a kid hit that stage yet. That's sure. a great question. But This is why this is your podcast. <laughs> <laughs> that was a good question. I would say when they're ready for social media, because the pinwheel does not have social media. So I don't think kids are ever ready for social media. I'm sorry. Ever. Super not true. Ever. (laughs) Um, (laughs) Here's the problem with that line of thinking is a, again, with the credit card, they're going to turn 18 and have all of this access and you have not been able to monitor and control it when you had the chance. So fair enough. You can monitor their social media interactions and say, Hey, you know what? this wasn't very nice to say to your friend or, you know, Hey, I saw that you did this, you know, here's why this wasn't an okay thing to do. And then you're able to teach them proper use while you have control of that. She okay. Wins. You're she right. Wins. Okay. She wins. You're right. <laughs> yep. She wins. It, do you know what the truth is? It's just way easier to say they're never ready. That's the truth. It's, yeah. yeah. I mean, it's true. You see some of the, we're just scared stuff. of it. I mean, <laughs> it's true. Like, I mean, not knowing about Discord and all this right. other stuff. You just, I think it's, it seems so far out there for us, you know, at least our generation. And so we just think, because it is true. Like the whole fear thing does kind of take over. Yeah. And, and you're right. It's, and it's like. The, it's a lot of it's the unknown, right? Well, that's what I'm saying. We don't know what we're doing. So we just shut it down where it's like. The example that you just used was very good. I mean, that's teaching a kid how. To socialize, you know, right. whether it's online or in real life, it's still kind of the same thing, right? right? And so you're taking these experiences and turning them into teaching moments, and you're still able to kind of see what's going on, right? And so that that's fair. I mean, it's kind of a lot of what we talked about with um, Kristen, you know, the whole red light, green light thing, like yeah. in the LDS church. It's just 
you know, you never talk about sex. Then all of a sudden you're married. And it's like, sweet, have fun. Right. <laughs> and you're just supposed to shed all that, like, you know, it's we very... never talked about it. We never communicated about it. Well, she, I mean, using Kristen, she talks about sexual education begins at a very right young age. You know, same thing with technology, right? Right. Like education in general. Right. Right. It's just a little bit more work for us. It is. It's way more yeah. work because and you have I to be think, more intentional about it. Yes. And that's hard for parents. Like technology is really kind of made parents life easy in a sense because it's like just here take this right i'm sick of you yeah <laughs> right use it as the babysitter and they lay in the <laughs> worst spots when they play on the phones too, <laughs> by the way. like i trip over cohen all the time it pisses me off so bad but but yeah i mean it's and, and maybe that's it maybe it's not so much the fear of letting him use it it's just Maybe it's a bit of laziness or... I think there's for sure some laziness. Right. And then I think every parent, like for me, for example, I personally don't love social media. Me. Right? So it's like... Oh, we know. So... Like, <laughs> I'm like, right there with you. Like when a kid asks for it, it's like, eh, I could... I don't need it. You don't need it. Right. Right. right? And so I think that, that also is part of the discussion is different people like certain things, right? Right. Has there ever been a generational gap like this in our history? <laughs> Never. You know what I mean? No, for real. Think about it. Like I think of my dad, like my grandpa and my dad. Okay. Records. Then moved into eight tracks. Like, I oh, that's it's... the devil. We went from right. like you're a few years younger, Andrew, but like we I had a mobile phone after I graduated high school, like ninety eight. Yeah. It was a brick. It was Nokia. turned off. I graduated in 97. Oh, no, when this is 97. Same year. Yep. So this was like the big, the first Motorola flip phone. So it, yeah. it was huge. The Zach Morris brick. The Zach, yeah. Yeah. It wasn't a brick. Yeah. It was a little smaller. Right. It was, it was And it was like, my dad's like, if that. you're dying on the side of the road <laughs> or you're like pre-hypothermia. Well, because it cost $100 per minute. Yes. Turn it on yes, and call. It, it wasn't did. until after I got home from my mission that the Nokia, like I got home and those tiny little Nokias were out. Yeah. But if you think about just the last 10, because you said 2006, you started blogging, right? And that's kind of when the mobile stuff started right. taking off. Yep. We are really the first like parental generation to go from Not texting was kind of normal to like everything is online, social media, right. social chat, like messenger. I mean, even their school. It, it, right. So well, right now there is a massive, to me, there's a greater divide between parent and child, like a, a tech technology For divide sure. than there's ever been in the history of man. No, that's absolutely true. Right. Um, and like you were saying, we didn't have these rules growing up because they didn't exist. Right. And so we're trying to come up with how this should look. We had like explicit lyric CDs in our right. car, like hidden <laughs> under the seat. Yeah. That was about exactly. as bad as like, like two live crew. Right, right. You know, band yeah. in the big US. booty house. <laughs> <laughs> anyway, but yeah, that was about as hidden and, you right. know, other than like making out with your girlfriend somewhere, you know. Off-site. Off-site. <laughs> <laughs> but I mean, we didn't have this phone that opened right. up this entire universe of literally whatever you want. Right. Right? No, and it's so true. It's crazy. So, and that's what I think it really scares parents because, you know, they weren't taught from their parents how this should look. Right. And so we're kind of making this up as we go and not knowing how it's going to affect the kids, basically, because... Right we didn't have that growing up and you know, we have to just approach it. You know, like I always talk about it. Like if your child is diagnosed with some sort of disease, you are going to scour the internet and find out everything you can about that disease. And I don't understand why wow. parents don't do the same thing with technology. They're going to give their child what a great point, a phone and not research what this phone can do, what, you know, what kind of pitfalls that, are around what apps they're downloading, you know? Right. So like I have controls that will, I have to approve an app that they download in three different applications anytime they download one. Wow. I, I said, we're, we're Fort Knox. <laughs> um, I want to be Fort Knox. No, see, yeah. I don't. I just want to get rid of the phone. If I started getting three notifications every time they wanted an app and I had to go into those, I'm like, that's it. 
<laughs> You're getting rid of your phone. You phones. don't have to have three, but at least one. Okay. Is no, and I have that for, you know, both my older kids have um, iPods, right? Which is an iPhone with Wi-Fi. Totally right. Okay. <laughs> and I spent like three hours per phone, like going through. They have no internet, no nice. anything. Yeah. It's but locked down. If, yeah. Check screen time, though, with iOS 14. See, it, the like, iPods oh. are dust now. They don't even oh, okay. care about them anymore. It's so funny. Yeah. But, <laughs> but yeah, I mean, I, I was getting mad. If they sent more than two requests a day, Yeah. because it's all through <laughs> iTunes, right? Right, right. Or, so, or, yeah, not iTunes. So here's, like, the scary thing app about store. With, like, app apps, store, though. Prove it. Like, on apps, they can be one app, and you can download it, and it can pass all the criteria. Like, no online, no chat, like, all this stuff. Right. And you can download it, and then they'll do an update to the app, and all of a sudden, all those features are there. Yep. You know, so I see that it's like those types of things. Yeah. Quit you, being scared, Andrew. Oh, I know, right? That's what I was this just going to so say. So fear based. Like the, I was going <laughs> to prove kidding. her point that that's what makes it takes it, three. That's what makes it scary. Fair. And I haven't put in the time to learn right what my options are, and so the easy or lazy answer is I'm scared of it. I'm deleting it. Right. Right? Yeah. I mean, that's the truth. Totally right. Yeah. It's kind of an all or nothing, you know, because, yeah, it's either you don't care and they, you just give it to them and, right. and you know, cross your fingers. Yeah. Or, yeah, you shut it down. But that, you know, a little metaphor of the whole, you know, they're re- relating it to if your kid had some sort of disease or diagnosis, like you're going to be on line all night long researching it. Right. Why aren't we doing the same thing with you know, our kids' phones. Yeah. And that's a little self-serving because, you know, when I first started my tech for moms, um, nobody was searching for my content because nobody cared. Right. And so <laughs> they were all looking for recipes and crafting. And I was talking about technology. Freaking Pinterest. I know. <laughs> but so now, I mean, as people are starting to be concerned about these things, and I'm glad people are getting concerned. For sure. Um, like, and they just need to research, you know, websites like familytechzone.com and things like that. That's right. Plug, plug. <laughs> it's my favorite website. Plug, plug. <laughs> right? Yeah. Should be everyone's favorite yep. website. <laughs> okay. So I want to get back to this. We're at Pinwheel. We've now graduated because I'm no longer living scared. Great. Yes, you are. <laughs> it's okay. I'm gonna, I am I'm going to face the fear though. Okay. But except with Marco Polo? No, that's dumb. Yeah, me either. Oh, <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> Sorry. On behalf of your wives, I mean, come she on. She can't even answer her phone. Well, true. Right? But you know what? I bet if you poloed her, she'd pull you back. I don't know. That may be I'm not doing it. <laughs> so what's our next step? Next up is an Android device. And here Boom. is the reasoning. Okay. Can we be done? No. <laughs> <laughs> I'm okay with parents having iPhones. I mean, they're idiots, but Whoa. I'm just kidding. Every tech I person love... I know, every like legit tech person that I know has an Android. They just do it to be different. That is true. I don't think that's no. true. No, it's not true. Um, Android is so much better. But the reason is Apple is so concerned with the privacy of its users, even if that user is 11 years old. So... They like all the parental control apps that you install cannot get to the parts of the operating system and parts of the app needed to be able to monitor it properly. Hmm. So if you have an Android device, you can monitor Instagram messages and Instagram posts. But on an Apple device, you can't um, because of this privacy setting. So like a. If I had an Android and my child had an Android, on my phone through an app, I could monitor their Instagram activity? Correct. But if you have an iPhone and they that have an Android. That didn't take long. I know. <laughs> Jeez. <laughs> if you have an iPhone and they have an Android, you can still monitor their Instagram activity exactly the same. Oh, because safe. Better. Yeah. There we go. Yeah. Like, so the parents, it's fine. Like, you can monitor and control exactly as you could with an Android device that you can with an iPhone, but it's the child's device that needs to be an Android device. And again, it's just because the operating system of Apple is so locked down that it doesn't I've give them access. I've always that about Apple. Yeah. I mean, their whole app store, like, there's just, there's so much less you can do with... Yeah. They kind of make the decision for you. Exactly. Well, right? and that's why most techs don't like it, is right. because... 
I'm being told how to use my technology and I don't want to be told how to use my technology. I want to choose how I use my technology. Right. How's Android now as far as like the thing that I used to hate is everything was so much prettier and smoother <laughs> on Apple devices because oh, it was I just mean, one phone, sure, one iPad. With Android, there's so yeah. many different companies making them. Right. So it depends on what you get. Everything seemed a little choppy. Yeah. You know? It just depends on what you get. You know, oh, you stick with some of the flagship phones. You're right. good. Yeah. Okay. Samsung, LG. Right. Um, I, I prefer you know more, Moto. Um, I prefer Samsung. Um, right. So how do you lock down your kid's phone? So we go from a pinwheel to an Android. Yes. Like what types of restrictions? What type of like how are you? What What are you doing to that? So um, there's a few parental control apps that I use. <laughs> um, so one is Google Family Link, which is free, included with Google. Um, you know, you download the app and that's going to you can set bedtimes, you can set time limits, um, you can do a lot to control like what they can see in the Google Play Store um, and in like the, you know, movies, you can lock YouTube safe search. So like there's a lot of like Google specific things you can do through um, Google Family Link. Which just kind of makes sense because Google owns all the stuff that we're worried about. Anyway. Exactly. <laughs> right. And don't they do they? Who owns Instagram? Facebook. Facebook owns Instagram. Okay. Yeah. But YouTube's Google. Right. Yeah. Yes. YouTube okay. is Google. So, wow. um, so Google family link is the first thing I install and that also helps you. So like they can't switch accounts or anything. Like if they create some like random Google account, they wouldn't be able to, you know, sign into that account through their phone and things like that. So, um, Google family links the first, um, then I install boomerang, which is boomerang parental controls, not boomerang the Instagram app. Right. I was gonna <laughs> you don't want to see fun pictures all day. Yeah. Yeah. Oh little gifts gosh. that, you know. <laughs> So um, Boomerang Parental Controls um, is actually, I can see full text threads of, you know, I can see every text message my daughter sends and receives. Um, I use a different app to just flag me if something's concerning. So sometimes I'll just go in and look at what she's talking about. And sometimes I'll just rely on the, you know, the Filters flags. to yeah. catch them, yeah. Um, so Boomerang will also help you... Um, lock to their safe search spin browser so it won't oh, like you can lock down chrome and things like that and just allow this filtered browser and you can set it so you know they can't access youtube.com or any of these other like or reddit.com or discord you know so that they can't go to any of these websites you can set that right. within boomerang so does it restrict like online chat inside of apps no it would allow like It'll allow or deny the app. And then okay. you can set time limits on the app okay. through Boomerang as well. Okay. Um, so then the next thing... Oh, and Boomerang will also give me a full report of all of the YouTube videos that they've watched. And I can click on inside the report and say, oh, you know, I want... Like, this one looks kind of concerning. I'll click on it and it'll open the YouTube video. So and this is what, like, China uses for all their right. citizens. Obviously. <laughs> right? <laughs> so I've been to China... Lenovo, um, they make computers. Right. They uh, brought me out to Beijing to, right. like, go to their headquarters and do this uh, Tech World event. And um, it was insane there. So we were on this tour... And we had somebody who was from Australia in our group that was of Chinese descent. Um, right. And like the the tour guide was like talking about this like history of this building or whatever. And like Jin's like, that is wrong. Wow. Like they are just so behind the great Chinese firewall. Right. Um, and they are being fed like history that is wrong. Um, and it's insane. And when I was there, I couldn't get on Gmail. I couldn't so get on Google Facebook. Like, I, if it's right? Or not. Yeah, <laughs> like I couldn't do anything when That's I was wild. there. It was just—it's insane. It's hard enough to do that with your kids. Imagine doing it with like a billion people. Right. <laughs> wow. So, with your phone at this stage, when you're letting the progression to an Android. Are you now introducing social media? Yeah. So that's, you know, generally when they go to Android, it's because they're ready for social media and the pinwheel doesn't have social media. Right. Um, and so introduce various social media, depending, they're going to want Snapchat and Instagram. Um, it's terrible apps, but I like if people say I will never allow Snapchat, but they let 
Instagram in, um, it's yeah. the same exact thing. <laughs> so don't, don't fool yourself that Snapchat's worse than Instagram because they're the same. Or if they're not going to let TikTok, but they will let right. Instagram, it's the same thing because Reels came out for Instagram totally. and it is exactly TikTok. So right. it like Instagram has all of the features of Snapchat and TikTok. Um, and actually TikTok is a better one than Instagram because it has actually amazing parental controls built into the app. See, but I've heard, once again, I've heard so many horror stories on TikTok about live suicide that, sure. you know, that's being broadcast and no one can control because it, it just pops up in the feed. Right. Right. So there's parental controls inside TikTok that would limit that. So like you assign your child an account underneath your own account and you can make it so they can't search for anything. You can make it so there's no messages like you, there's no messages that they can send or receive. That's what I'm most scared about. I, yeah. Well, and that's the thing. Most people aren't setting up accounts like this. They're just letting them have an account. Yeah. Right. right. But like, like messaging chat boards, like even like my boys, with like online Xbox games, like I just, I'm scared of it. And so I don't do it. Right. right. It's just like a lack of Oh, my kids knowledge. They're not getting, don't let them on the Xbox live. <laughs> do not. At least to be able to talk. Right. Like. So have you I, set up Xbox, Microsoft family, um, so there's Microsoft family and you could control the Xbox like time limits and stuff from your phone. Right. Um, I just don't want them to be able to hear another person because it yeah. is the most racist. Oh, I'm sure. Filthy. I mean, if you want to hear what 12 year olds are capable of, yeah. <laughs> like go play Call of Duty for an hour. <laughs> <laughs> it will blow your mind. Yeah. Anyway. Oh, I totally believe it. But yeah, I mean, and then there's chat features on basically every social media platform. Mm -hmm. Even Pinterest yeah. has messaging. So, you know. It would be hard to limit messaging across the board unless the app itself has the ability to limit it. And so TikTok does have that ability. It has the ability to um, you know, turn off search, turn off, um, get set time limits, um, and then just like toggle uh, like clean version. Like so it's more filtered than. Um, well, if it's under your account, you'd be able to just see everything, right? I don't, you can't see like what they're, there's no reporting, right. but, um, you can control all of those features on theirs. Or I can just log right in and see what's going on. Yeah. 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 And okay. so, and what you can also set is anytime you set any of those things, um, you can make it so they can't log out of that account. So if they're so on, they can have like a dummy account or a, right. They can't switch accounts. That's not being monitored by you because yeah. it locks them out of switching accounts. Yeah. So, hmm. okay. Um, so like TikTok is actually better than Instagram on those. Instagram keeps, they claimed like a year ago, they announced these like great parental control features to make it a little safer for kids and like have not delivered on that. Um, I mean, I like Instagram and my, my daughter does have Instagram. She's 15, but, um, but again, I monitor it through bark. So that's the other parental control. I have bark and that will flag me for anything that she's posting or messages that she's sending and receiving that are concerning. Yeah, but only if she has an Android. Only if she has an Android that okay. doesn't work for an iOS. Wow. The bark doesn't work on that stuff? On that stuff for a kid's iOS device. Okay. Yeah. Okay. So, so if you have see, iOS, okay. yeah. If you have iOS, totally works just fine. Um, it's the kid's device that needs to be Android. Got it. And so, I mean, the moral of the story is, just like with everything, right? If you want your kids to fail, have them fail in the house. Right. So you can teach them. You can correct them. Right. Help them grow and then yes. set them set them straight, right? right? Right. As opposed to throwing them out and then just crossing your fingers that it all goes well. <laughs> right. Yeah. And so this whole thing, it, it is. It's just it's changing your your paradigm that it's not if it's when. Yep. Absolutely. Right. And mm -hmm. so, no matter how hardcore you are as a parent, there is going to come a time where your children will have un Un, what's the word? Something access to unfiltered, technology. Yeah. Unfiltered access to technology. Is right. it unfettered access a word yeah. too? <laughs> yes, I think that's I'm it. so I'm so smart. <laughs> you know? <laughs> but it's gonna happen to them. Let's teach, you know, how to help th through that. Well, and yeah. the other part of human nature that's scary is if you just keep them away from it, they're gonna binge when they get it. Yes. You know what I mean? So to me it would also seem wise to kind of slowly you know and in a controlled way like right you know start small and just kind of work your way up 
But if you completely shut it out, it's just yeah. they're going to go crazy when they get it. And right. full, like, blown addiction is going to kick in. And yeah. they will get it. And they will right. get it. Yeah, yeah. They w- you can't control them well, forever. They yeah. will get it. And unless they're in China. Yeah, unless they're in China. <laughs> then you're okay. safe. Right. <laughs> No, they'll get it too. And like, you know, as they get older, they'll end up getting like a burner phone or something like that. Like their friends will give them a phone that, you know, they've got laying around in their house that's old or whatever. They'll get it. And it's better for you to give it to them and have that control and monitoring so they know, you know, how they teach your kids, give them the skills. Right. On how to manage it. Right. Yep. Not only if like for us as parents to be able to correct it, mm-hmm. but more importantly, like let's help teach our children. Let's let's show the good, the bad, the ugly of these things. Right. Let's Absolutely. let's not hide what it is, mm-hmm. but it can be good. It can be valuable. Right. And so let's make sure that we teach that to our kids as opposed to just, OK, you're 15. Sarah said you deserve an Android device. Right. There you go. Right. But there's no talk about it. There's yeah, no teaching. No. It's just you hit this mark. Here you go. I'm I'm now a responsible parent because I waited to do sure. this. But now here you go. Right. Right. I know. If you don't give it to him, you can judge the other ones. <laughs> right. Right. It. Right. So we're gonna lose that. I'm never too. giving Gosh, my kid. Dang it. Yeah. So yeah. So that's the warning. Like, cause then I get all. Of the people who are like, oh, yeah, just flip phones here for us until they're 18. And I'm like, you do know the flip phone has a browser, right? Like they can get on the Internet on the flip phone. It's better to give them an Android device or a pinwheel device where you can actually control that instead of a flip phone where you can't right. control it. Yeah, see, that's overboard. I've always just said high school. Yeah. Like you can have social media when you're done with middle school, junior high. Well, then we'll start introducing it. But... Not until then for me. Yeah. And I think it's okay that every parent is different. Every parent. Yeah. Right. right. I mean, they're wrong, but, <laughs> anyone, but yeah, it's okay. Anyone who's different than me is definitely wrong. For sure. I'm right. So, and that's what I, that's, that's what I love Apple about only. technology too, is everybody can use technology the way that makes sense for them. Right. And so to give a hard, fast rule, Hey, you know, this is the time that you do this and this is the time you do that I think is unfair because every family is different. Every situation is different and you know, you need to be able to adjust to those and figure out what's going to be best for your children. Right. And do a little research, right? And do some research. My high school thing is based off research. You know, I I read the book from Jonathan Haidt. Have you ever heard of him? I don't think so sociologist he he's actually been on rogan a couple times which have been really fascinating but self-harm is kind of his forte and just the statistics especially with girls yeah in middle school Mm -hmm. since like like you can see it you can see it jump right at 2011 sure like right when social media went mobile like cutting and suicide and yeah. all this stuff just jumped but and it's just the brains aren't about that. Yeah, yeah. right the brain oh that's actually who they quote oh okay is jonathan yeah. hey that oh, okay. that that thing you that graph you see that's his graph right but um but yeah what's cool is he's not he's kind of like you he doesn't he doesn't say like you just shut it down it's just at this point the brain can handle this and at this point the brain can handle that right. and you just kind of go off of that but yeah i mean 13 14 is technically about that spot where you can start introducing it but yeah before that it's freaky because middle schoolers are dicks right like they are <laughs> mean well and i think it's important too for your kid for you to show your kids that you know when we were kids you knew who the popular kids were right. whatever but now they have like quantifiable data <laughs> now right. on that. likes and number of followers See, and that, i hate that too like right how many how many views does it have you yeah. know, when I hear kids say that, I'm like, oh. Instagram talked about like getting rid of like showing you how many likes and follows. No, they like, did. They do did that. do that. Yeah. I know, but they didn't. It didn't stick. It never happened to my account. Oh, it's happened really? to a couple of my accounts. Yeah. I like, have a few. I can see them. I can see everyone else's. Like I've heard some people that have. Oh no, you can to. still open it and see who like. It just doesn't say like right in the front how many likes. It says like this person and and hundreds of and others. hundreds of others. Yeah. <laughs> but you get yeah you can still click on no, that and I, see I who still, it was. I can always still see the number of likes though. Oh really? I think one of my accounts. You have to you still update can. the software. 
It's probably no, been a couple actually, years. It's updated. I'm just kidding. <laughs> it's account based because one of my accounts, I still see numbers and one of my accounts, I have like five. I think he's still yeah. in the hundred. So, yeah, oh my gosh. True. I'm a <laughs> nerd. I'm a <laughs> Apple guy. Yeah. It's just an it's Android okay. thing. I do have friends that have Apple devices. I don't and shut them out of my life. <laughs> <laughs> I don't shut them out of my life completely, but okay. I know. Talk to our brother-in-law, Matt Peterson. I know software guru. He'll he'll totally rip you for having an Apple. It's it's hilarious. Smart but man. But here's the thing, though. I don't want control. I want to be able to pick it up, and I want it. Right. So that's why I like Apple's is because I'm yeah. not a technology person. Right. I want it to be easy, and I want it to tell me exactly how it's supposed to be used. Yeah. Because I'm okay with that. You should move to China. <laughs> I have it in my hand. <laughs> <laughs> that's a good point <laughs> no but that's true like i do recommend apple devices to some people because i'm like you know they're morons you, well i mean just they kidding. just i have an apple device he's an apple watch he's to... on a mac he has an <laughs> iphone <laughs> airpods next to it uh, no i was at verizon the other day getting the gizmo getting right? the gizmo and my wife has had the same iphone for like three years and it's hammered sure. so i was pre-ordering the new one for her and I looked at the Android wall. I'm like, what am I doing with an iPhone still? Like, this thing sucks. The Like, all the Android phones are, but you the screens are better. Well, I I haven't decided. You'll I didn't do the pre-order for me. You'll have it. I don't know. Because I don't use my devices a lot, like, across, right. like, I haven't, I have this because I just like to control my headphones, like, when I'm listening to a podcast or whatever. But I don't use messages on my computer right. or on my you know, iPad, like I don't really use the devices the way that you could use them together. Yeah. So me swapping so my phone. phone. Well, no, it's just easier. <laughs> like I said, I don't even open text messages, <laughs> at least that people know about. But, <laughs> but yeah, it, 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 it is hard because you think they totally suck you in with like the bubbles, iMessage, yeah. you know, just there's so many little features and that's that you why do use. A lot of kids will want an iPhone is it's a status stri- thing. no it's strictly because of iMessage right um because of the like I don't know am I blue or am I green I don't so I'm not gonna lie <laughs> I hate green text it <laughs> bugs me when it's green ew it does I'm like you are a real douche <laughs> It does. Like, if there's a group message and someone's got an Android device, I'm like, kick that person out of this group message. I don't want to have a group message with you right now. (laughs) But that's actually what kids do. It's a total status thing. No, seriously, they do. Like, they they won't include a kid who has an Android device because they don't want the group. So... Ugh. I'm on a crusade to like switch all the kids to Android devices. I'm really but. surprised that somebody, especially with how open the platform is, yeah. that somebody hasn't written a program or an app that makes, you know, makes it look like you're an iMessage. So, I mean, um, Google is working on um, kind of more integration right. um, and that they have to get the carriers involved and everything so that those two platforms can talk to each other better. Gotcha. Um, like I said, I hate when I'm in a group message with a bunch of Apple users because every time they like a message, I get like five more texts. Oh, so the stupid it, little double clicks. S- no, it's like it says the, somebody liked right. this. Somebody liked this. Somebody emoji. liked See, this. But if you're all, like, oh my gosh. If you're all Apple, you would, I will get that. Say, it would just pop up. I would miss that because I don't have to respond. I can just part it. <laughs> just uh-huh. react. Yeah, that would be hard to leave. See, you're back. I got <laughs> you. I'm back. I got you. Back. I'm, I'm back. <laughs> Just kidding. See, and I can admit that those, like, that's the one of the biggest pulls that you know bring right. kids to ios devices is oh, it's, it's just proof of how dumb we are right. say, if you think about it stupid it is the stuff. stupidest first word problems first word you problems. can't just put lol or some emoji on there like oh i can't double click oh no Mm-mm. gross i am not switching <laughs> oh all right i want to switch a little bit on this yeah this has been awesome i want to talk social dilemma okay Let's talk Social Dilemma. Have you watched it? I did. I watched it yesterday. Because when I texted you, she's like, I haven't even seen it. I mean, I've been avoiding it because um, I knew I would be annoyed. but <laughs> um, And I was for the most part. But it did have some good information. I'm pulling up my notes. Because here's the thing. They did a fantastic job of scaring the crap out of you. 
Sure, if you don't know what you're doing. Well, yeah, but, <laughs> well, the, but the, no, they did for the average I, person. No, no, walking, no, I totally I did. agree, but I do think that there was enough in there to say, like, it's just more about understanding what's happening so you yeah. can... But the thing is, is everything's so fear-based now, and we're so trained to just immediately get defensive and scared that mm-hmm. I think 95% of the people that watched it were just well, what was freaked our, out I by mean, it. I right? mean, our reaction the day after, like our episode, oh, no. it, it, it was like... it Like, you kind of know all that's happening, but when you see exactly... I think looking back on it now, especially after what you told me that Anna said about, like, you guys are, you know, usually don't... You guys face things head on yeah. or whatever, and I'm like... <laughs> Whatever, but <laughs> I think for me it was the dramatic family, like the fake family. Oh, that was the most annoying part of the that, whole thing. That was the part, as I look back now, you're making, you're taking everything to the worst place possible. Right. Like the crying little girl yeah, and the boy that can't like walk away from his phone. Like it wasn't super realistic it, it, and that's what we respond to nowadays right. and it played on that. Like yeah. it totally That's why played. I said they did such a good job because yes. it took all of... It our took fears that family and magnified it. it. Yeah, not that it was true, right? But it took. Well, it can be true. The scariest. It took some of the scariest parts that people have always like. Like, I know my phone is listening to me, right? Yeah. I don't care what they say. <laughs> I it don't is care listening what they to say. you. I'm going to say I want a Dyson vacuum. A Dyson, and my next ad will be a Dyson vacuum. Yep. Yeah. It's going to happen. Wait, sure. do you say it listens to you? Yeah, it absolutely does. Interesting. Um, it's like the first tech person that's like actually admitted it because here's the thing um and so (laughs) we have a little fight in my house because i am super into technology and everything and so i like i have over 60 devices connected to my wi-fi network whoa Um, holy moly smart home devices like so like all the light switches all the light bulbs that's your job too right right so like and so i have a bunch of like google home devices as well okay and my husband like does not want the Google Home devices to have the microphone on. I'm like, you carry a Google Home device <laughs> That's with right. you. That's what makes me laugh about all people all time when yes. they do say that, and they're like, but yet they'll keep their phone, yeah, on their body. It's like you understand you are like it's already listening to everything you're saying. Doesn't Google so, scare you a little bit though? I love Google. I mean, Google. I mean, makes the me feel happy biggest inside. antitrust lawsuit of all time. Just was slapped on them. Like, they are yeah. a little scary. So here's the thing. Go ahead and use Bing. Yeah, they're scary, too. <laughs> I'm just I mean, saying, for like... for real, that's, that's the scary thing about If you're going right? to be the best, like, you're going to be the best. And nobody's going to use anything else. So to right. slap them with an antitrust, there's other ways to use what you want to use. You know, you can use Bing. You can use DuckDuckGo. You know, you can use right. these other search engines they're just not as good, and so everyone's going to default but back I'm to Google. But I'm more talking the company in general. True. I mean, it has a lot of... Right. Um, like, they've done some stuff. Well, yeah, sure. I mean, they all have. Yeah. I mean, if that's the case, we wouldn't use Apple either, but... Yeah. I don't know. Like, I think Google has a little bit of a PR issue on their hands right now. Sure. I could see that. Um, I I just... My whole life is in Google. Like, right. you know, Gmail, I use... And Google that's what's so business. funny. I use Gmail. Yeah. I live in Google, everything. So all of... Yeah, what's Except funny? Except for your about, Right? Isn't that funny? But all of my stuff is through Gmail. So I, like yeah. everything, like my Chrome is synced on all my devices. Yeah. You know how much better it is on Androids? Right. Like the Gmail app on an Android, Google Maps, which we all use. Apple Maps sucks. Yeah. It is so much better on Android, yet we all still use Apple phones. I'll never right. switch from Nike. <laughs> oh my gosh! Oh, this is on. I will. Where where did that come from? I'll never switch from Nike. That's, like, how, that's how I am with Apple. I have, the, I have the Apple logo on one butt cheek, and I have <laughs> Nike swoosh on the other. And they got me, and they got me good. You no, know, he's a very independent thinker. Like Obviously. he's a very sharp guy. Obviously, and he's very contrarian. Like he yeah. kind of sits there with this like. Bucks the stoic, the judgmental look on his face. Oh, yeah. But he's just as big of a sheep as the rest of us, you know? <laughs> and so it makes me feel a little bit better about myself. Yeah, it's good. <laughs> yeah. My no, husband it, does call it Skynet. Re- like. <laughs> <laughs> That's true. Well, and you made a, an interesting point because when something is the best, yeah. haters going to hate. Sure. Right? And And there's probably a lot of that, too. Yeah, for sure. Because, I mean, obviously they've done some amazing things. I mean, they're a verb yeah. now. Right. right. Google Gonna it. Google that. You're, yeah. You Google it. So, Go to the Googs. Right. Okay. Um, social dilemma. Back to social dilemma. <laughs> so 
Yeah, the family really annoyed me um, just because it was so far yeah. to like, you know, it was playing on the all of those. Worst of everything that can happen. Right. You know, the girl goes over there and smashes the... That was awesome. Um, well, I'm like, I'm like that A would not happen I know. in my house. Oh, no. I meant, I, B, you know, I was thinking of something else. No, that girl would be beat. Yeah, I was like, saying, you're talking about the teenager that went and got it out of the like little safe. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Oh yeah. Oh hell no. Yeah, exactly. I'm like that would not happen in my. And house. how the parents are just like, oh, they're like, well, oh darn it. Yeah. Oh whatever. Can't believe she did that. Yeah. There must be a problem. That's with the silly phones. little goose. No, there's a parenting problem right yeah. there. Like, <laughs> like that's not a problem with social media. That's a problem with you. Yeah. And uh, let's true. be honest, that's where most of technology like we talked about social media the blame lands on the parents on us for sure absolutely so but it's way easier to blame something else it's so much easier i mean everybody yeah. else or bury your problem. head in the sand yeah. yeah so i'm gonna bury it and then i'm gonna blame other people for yeah. my head being buried yeah that's stupid mark zuckerberg <laughs> mark zuckerberg ruined my child's <laughs> life <laughs> well did he um so yeah. like one of the most quoted parts of that is that always stands out that I've seen more like quote things on social media. Users are only referred to as drug users oh, right. and technology users. I was Everyone meaning. else, it's like clients or right. patients or customers. Guests. Guests. Like the Disney only people person. who were <laughs> like the only industry is tech and heroin and <laughs> drugs. <laughs> You That's know, true. and it's just like a dramatized, dram, oh, whoa. dramatized, dramatized. Dr- yeah, dramatized. He, he, dramatized. he got it. He got, got it. it. Thank you. I'm, yeah. I told you, you guys, <laughs> I'm really smart, <laughs> you know, but it just goes on once again, just that one quote yeah. helps like amplify the whole thing. Sure. Yeah. And it's interesting because I was, I, I meant to try and think of any other industry, like, but then I ran out of time to think of it. But I mean, it's true, like user interface, you know, it's always been, you know, these people are using the software. So that's, you know, what they're called. I get it. Um, But and it's interesting. I know the parts where they're trying to make it addictive. And it's true, like Snapchat streaks are like the most addictive things ever. I didn't even know what that was until I was in the young men. Yeah. And we were going somewhere and they were all complaining that they were going to blow their snap streak. I was like, yeah, the crap are you talking about? It brings them back to Snapchat every day to like make sure to keep their streak going because, you know, you're not a good friend with somebody unless you have like a ginormous streak with them. Or they'll give their password to a friend so they can do it so they can keep their streaks up when they're out. So that's what all my young men did because we went. to How is that different than heroin? Right. <laughs> so that's what our young men did because we had like a three day event with no cell phones and technology. They had to leave it home. Yeah. Did but you they, lock it up one of those Tupperware right. safes? Yeah. <laughs> did somebody cr- smash it? <laughs> but like they all were talking like who they gave their password information to. Right. Good. Hell. So they could go and keep all of these streaks going. Yeah. And that was the first time I'd ever heard of it. And I was just like, oh, you guys, what is, what's I mean, going on? We would have on? all done the same thing. Sure. Yeah. 100%. I mean, it's hard to admit. But that's but... built specifically to bring them back to the app right. every Correct. day. Like TikTok, I will. So I have TikTok just to see, like, I have friends that will send me funny videos that are on TikTok sure. and I just want to be able to open them. I have never, ever, ever, ever opened one of those videos and not watch 30 more (laughs) when I'm on there. Because all you got to do is swipe down to the next one. Right. And they're all freaking amazing. Yeah. Oh my gosh, that TikTok is horrible. I I like TikTok. It's awesome. (laughs) Yeah. Like And and, I mean, you could call it, yes, it's addicting. But I mean, casinos do the same thing, but we still go play blackjack. Like, I guess it is just all about moderation. Because the social dilemma, it would be really interesting if somebody made a social dilemma more, you know, Honest. along the tone that you have, Yeah. right? Just let's take the dr- the dramatic family that's cutting themselves and, you right. know, smashing Tupperware. Like <laughs> well, what, th- what 12 year old girls doing that in their house? Well, right. what's funny is even with social dilemma, I felt like the most valuable thing of all were the credits after it was over. That's exactly what I felt too. I'm like, this is actually some really good tips. Yeah. And that was that was the most yeah. valuable thing is totally the whole thing agree. was over. 
Yep. And then they're showing like the B roll. Right. And they're like, so what are you doing? They're like, oh, I just turned off my notifications. Right. I have screen time. The like, notifications are out of control. Yeah. But guess what? Oh. That's, you can turn them off. That's such an easy way because all a lot of that stuff that they talk about them, how they're manipulating you is based right. on getting notified, opening the app when they notify you, clicking on a video that they suggest. Right. And so it just goes back to if you open that app and you're intentional with it, which is going back to all of the people who they, talk about they it. They suggest such good videos sometimes. They do. They're, I'm such they're a good sucker. At it. But I it, mean, they totally know. Like the Saints. I don't have their notifications turned on. But every time the Saints post something, it pops up on my screen like post or Saints just posted a photo. I'm like, oh, I got to show support. <laughs> like, <sighs> but anyway. I did. I thought it was interesting that 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 should have been a really important part I of so the agree. film. Yes, because that's an actual skill, tool, trick, tip, whatever the crap you want to call it. Yeah, that actually helps fight the whole premise of social dilemma. Yeah, somebody should just edit it, take all the family crap out, right, and then just show the video. So it's like, hey, just watch the credits. It's that's great. <laughs> I love the guy that was like, look. You either look at your phone before you take a leak in the morning. Or after. Or after. Yeah. <laughs> or, or during. During or after. Oh. <laughs> I never, like, when's the last time you didn't look at your phone the first, like, right when you wake up? Uh-huh. Yeah. Like, I grab my glasses off my nightstand. Like, I wake up, I grab my phone, I gla- grab my glasses, because I know I'm going to look at my phone immediately. Yeah. Holy crap. Like, yes, I'm a user. Yeah. Like, <laughs> user is the perfect, yeah, exactly. <laughs> I mean, it is it head. is addicting. They know what they're doing, uh-huh. and so. Yeah. But that's that's the disconnect. It's like, for some reason, as adults, we justify it like I'm an adult, I can handle it. And yes, sure. that's true. Right. The scary thing is like, but my kid can't handle this, even though I'm doing it. My kid can't right. handle this, and that that is true to a point. But it is scary. Like we're we're grown ass people. Yeah. No. And we can't not look at 30 TikTok videos when you just open one link. So how bad is it for them? Yeah. And that's that's the hard part. So I also recommend putting parental controls on yourself. So like both even Apple screen time and Android devices have the Android devices is called digital well-being. And you can set time limits on different applications. Yeah. On yourself? And on yeah. yourself. Yeah. I'm not doing it. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> no way. Well, so and. I would totally just put my password and just be like, yeah, never mind. So this is what you do. You have the password that only Ashley knows. Yeah. Uh, I mean, there's definitely ways to help moderate yourself. But like even Anna just showed like a trick that there's like, like workflows. I don't know what else to call them. I call them a workflow where you can set it up on your Apple where as soon as you... No, we're like, she showed the how you, when you open up Instagram, a timer automatically starts. And after like five minutes it goes... (laughs) <laughs> uh-huh no but like you you That's can make it happen a good idea yeah you know like oh my gosh give yourself boundaries right, right. interesting because at the end of the day that's that's what this requires to not become a quote-unquote user yeah is to have boundaries around it right right yeah and there's some other really cool applications like um i think it's called space um and it will like if you're trying to like not look at your phone so much it's counting how many times you unlock your phone every day oh, wow. and like will say, hey, you only have three more times to unlock your phone, you know, before you can't unlock your phone anymore for the day. Wow. You know, I mean, you can override it, obviously, but like it really helps. And what is that one? That um, space, I believe. Is that on both? Uh, I'm sure it is. That's, but. Of course it's on Apple. Yeah. <laughs> it probably looks better. <laughs> Yeah, because it's an old phone. It's an outdated phone. How do they get us with their crappy phones? Right? They really are crappy phones. You guys finally compared got to everything else. I know. For the first right? time. And I'm like, oh wow, it's finally I, I not widgets. just a wall of apps. Oh, I don't my even God. know what like, a widget is. I don't care. A wall of apps is <laughs> what I had <laughs> on my palm three yeah. when I was like in college. I had that first Android device with the slide out screen. Like nice. I was so diehard. Yeah, you were. Back in the day. These yeah. are widgets, Helen. <laughs> I had a handspring. It's like I can see my whole calendar without even opening an app. I can check off my to-do list without even opening an app. Look at that screen. So it saved you one click. 
Yeah, I don't want to open an app. You I can't. Just e- you don't even know what she's talking about. Sure, I, I just watched her do it. No, 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 no. Although I did set up the thing where it talks when I charge it that Anna did the other day. <laughs> yeah. It's an old German lady. It's like, oh, that is nice. <laughs> 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 that was the best. I, I'm sitting there like mouth breathing, just like, okay, shortcut. I like switch back to her video like seven times to like remember each step. But once I got in there, I started, there was all these different accents and you can slow the rate. Of, it's hilarious. <laughs> anyway, that's keeping me on iPhone. But, but yeah, speaking of, oh, sorry. Go oh ahead. no, there's like other cool things you can do. Like I can set that um, my phone automatically goes to do not disturb at a certain time every night so that no notifications are coming through during the night. I can also set it to like go completely black and white at a specific time because our brains are like blue light. Well, no, it's not necessarily that, but like the colors and everything are really entertaining. And like, right. you know, when it's all black and white, you get really bored of it really quick, right. you know? So if it's black and white and you're like scrolling through Instagram, you're like, eh, I'm bored, I'm done. Interesting. Like, and you end up putting it down. So like it goes to black and white at a specific time and then it goes to no notifications at a specific time. So you can, you can do a lot of things to help moderate yourself. I feel sure. like the notifications is the biggest thing. Oh, it's bad. Like, so I, that was actually something that like my business coach told me about because it was more centered around email. Mm-hmm. Cause, like I'm totally addicted to email. Like I can't handle if I pick up my phone and there's like a red number <laughs> drives me nuts. I'm just addicted to deleting email, you know? And so like, <laughs> I want to make sure it stays at a number, <laughs> but so like, I, like get on there, like delete, delete, delete. delete. I oh, check my ridiculous. email so much and they're like, you have to do it when you want to do it. And so like I started turning off notifications. And so now the only notifications I get are text messages and phone calls, but it's so nice. Yeah. Yeah. You know, I there think are so many notifications. Yeah. So many, but it's, it's insane. I know. Look how many I have right now. <laughs> but like, oh my gosh. Yeah. For me, that was like the biggest thing for me, no. like taking control, like the notification. Right. Wow. So what was, what was some of your other takeaways from social dilemma? Um, well, and I think the whole addiction thing is not a new concept and they're playing it off like it is. I mean, I remember, you know, a long time ago when Blackberry was called Crackberry <laughs> because Blackberries everybody, were awesome. everybody was obsessed with their Blackberry. I mean, and it wasn't a smartphone. It yeah. was like email, you know, people yep. were obsessed with their email. Um, so the keyboards were so good. Right. Oh gosh. I miss those things. Yeah. <laughs> There so used to fast. be a time when you could pry the keyboard out of my cold dead hands, right. <laughs> but <laughs> then a like great keyboard. I know, um, but so it's you know this isn't necessarily a new concept, but um, they're kind of playing it off like you know nobody's ever been addicted to technology. Well, they're marketing like this. here's all of the secrets from these big companies, yeah, right. And they did get some pretty big names, but you'll one you'll always find what you're looking for, right? Yeah. So if there's ten of those people. There might be a thousand people who are saying something different, right? You know, Absolutely. of the same stature and level that these people are. Right. But the one thing that we keep not talking about is, is the AI. Yeah. Like that is a pretty well known thing that at some point this thing's going to get too smart for its own good. Sure. And that's the other Skynet. thing. It, 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 I mean, it totally is, right? I mean, it's it's funny. There's a new show about it on Fox. It's a good show. A I new Terminator. Next. Oh. No, AI no. takes oh, over. I gotcha. oh, like okay. AI starts like, yeah. and anybody that kind of catches on to what it's doing, it kills them. Get you. Oh, of course. Like they, the lights turn green, yeah. like get T-boned. But you know, it's like obviously robot. that's over, overblown. But yeah. at what point are these things just way too smart for their own good where it can blow past filters and it can sure. blow, you know, and yeah. that's, I think that's the other thing that they're kind of talking about is at a certain point. It might go further than we can control it. Sure. Not Terminator style, right. but, <laughs> well, you know, no. just <laughs> it, if you teach, if, if something that large and powerful and smart, its sole purpose is to create revenue. Right. It's going to blow. It's just going to teach itself how to do that better. Yeah. So and so from a marketing perspective, I mean, it's amazing that like, so I worked for, I work for an IT service provider here in Utah and um, I do some marketing for them as well. And in, I can pinpoint CEOs in Salt Lake City for an ad about our services. Right. Which oh, it's scary. Is a, well, it's, that's not scary. That's amazing because if I just Very blast out an ad, 
like only, you know, 30% of the people would actually be interested in my services, but I can show my services to people who will actually be interested right. in it. You and know, it stops mailers. Right. Even though those haven't slowed down a bit yet. <laughs> <laughs> oh my gosh, I hate those things. <laughs> so from a marketing perspective, like it's really great. And, you know, it really is amazing how targeted you get, like, especially like Facebook ads. Yeah. Like you could be like, I want to target someone who, goes to the grocery store at this time of day who buys these types of things and has this clicks on these types of pages. But all they want you to do is buy more though. And that's the other scary thing, right? Yeah. Is cookies. It's like, okay, I was kind of thinking about, well, look at new hockey sticks, right? right? I was looking at hockey sticks and it's like the one I want 300 bucks, which is insane. But now every site that I click on, there's a freaking pop up <laughs> or, you know, an ad down the with the hockey stick that I want. Right. <laughs> and it's like, okay, at like, some point I'm just going to give it like, oh, I need that. You know you want it. And and that's, <laughs> that's like ads, it, they, those are harder for the normal person to control. Right. Like even ad blockers, like I use an ad sure. blocker, but then websites will be like, well, you can't really, you can't use our website unless you turn off your ad blocker. Sure. So it, it some of that's hard because at that point, we are powerless to the marketing. Right. Like we should be able to shut it off. Like we should be able to visit websites without them. I, I don't know the term leaving, co dropping cookies or whatever that's called. Right. Stupid name. Cookies. Cookie monster. Yeah. Yeah. But I mean. Chocolate chip. If, macadamia nut. Like I want to be able to surf the web without six million companies just like selling my information on what I looked at. Like yeah. That is a, to me, that is a huge privacy issue. Sure. Right. I, I can see that. Right. You know, then the other, you she know. She just called you stupid in no, a no, really no. nice way. I no. I can see that. Right. No, I totally, I totally agree. But uh, to the other point is it's nice that I'm not getting served ads that I care nothing about. You know, I'm getting served ads of stuff that I would actually want, you know, right. and maybe it's a little much, you know, where like everything's the same hockey stick. It could like, you know broaden it out a little bit you know <laughs> right. show me like the last five things i looked at maybe at a better sale right right put it on sale a little right. bit better <laughs> um but you know i'm not gonna see you know cigarette ads because i've never smoked a cigarette or i'm never gonna see these things that i don't care about i'm gonna only see things that i would actually want um and it helps for smaller companies. I think it's good for small business because a small business can put their product or service right in front of it your face. It levels the playing field for sure. Right. You know, they can't afford a, a commercial at the yes, Super Bowl. Yes, for sure it does. Yeah. I mean, but if somebody else that's a competitor has way more money than me. There's so many clicks. There's so much room. And the oh. more targeted you get, the more likely that person is to see it. Gotcha. So like if you're going to be like super generic, then yeah, you're going to, it's going to be harder. But like if you can nail down who your person is, it's going to be. So who do I talk to to do that? <laughs> Me. I mean, as a small business owner, you know, you should like right. take advantage of that because it's helping you get, you're like, hey, this is really awesome barbecue, you know, and people are like, oh, I've never even heard of that. Right. And they can come in. So it's not. But who do you call to do that? Marketing companies. Okay. But well, yeah. you say mar that's like saying, I mean. You can do it yourself. Bajillion, I mean, yes. Like I've done ads on Instagram, like right. for barbecue classes. And yeah, there's like a bunch of little, this zip code, this rate, right. you know, it, but it doesn't get down to like CEOs and things like that. But. It's funny. I know there's a ton of people that do it, but I still haven't talked to one. You know what I mean? Like, I think it's a little harder to to find one than people think. So instead of it's almost like TikTok there's videos. too many. Does that make sense? <laughs> maybe watch some marketing videos yeah, uh, and then you. Can and maybe that's the problem. <laughs> See what happened to the good old days where you just hire somebody to do something for you. Well, you can still right? do that, but I mean, people, small businesses that can't afford a full time like marketing person right. or a marketing company, you know, they can watch some YouTube videos, get the information, and you know, basically be able to do it themselves. So, but like, I still have to cook the barbecue. Well, yeah, you're gonna have to do that. <laughs> She'll take care of it. But so I'm, I'm not upset about the targeting. Yes, I. 
can see that people would be kind of upset about the privacy. Oh, you know too much about me. But honestly, they're well, they know like, too much about us either way. Right. If our Bluetooth's on our phone, we're screwed. Right. Right. There's Walk into Target. If they you have, know if where you have walk. a smartphone, it is right. already happening. Right. Your car, you know, like like your car tells you like they have it all. Yeah. So it's almost to the point now where it's like just give up. Right. And just take it. <laughs> No, I mean, seriously, like, stop worrying about it because there's nothing you can do. But that sucks. So that's a question for you, Sarah. Is there anything you can do to help protect yourself? Live off the grid. (laughs) Exactly right. See? And that that is true. Yeah. There's – it it just gets to the point where, you know, I remember Susan like, well, I like it. Right. Because I want them to send the catalogs I want and I want – but to me, it's just more of, like, the principle of the thing. See, Like, if I want to be able to go dark – I want to be able to do that. Yeah. You know, but and I, I have to get rid of my car, right. my phone, my computer. Right. And my, nobody's willing like, to. And well, you can't. Yeah. Like you literally cannot, like if you own a business, if you work, if you if you can't do it. Right. And so I think it you're comes screwed. down to like if you use it, then you can appreciate it. <clears throat> right. Cause like, but is that just us like having to tell ourselves that it's okay? Like, <laughs> because really, it's it's just the prettier way of saying there's nothing you can do. You're powerless. I will say the younger generation is way less concerned about privacy than, you know, so it, as it because it's kind just of becomes dancing the in norm. Front of strangers every day. Right. Well, because it TikTok. just it's just so normal. It, right. it is what it is. Yeah. So I you sound I've, like a teenager. I've said true privacy is <laughs> as what <gone>. as. <laughs> as what <laughs> yeah, as. Andrew. Oh. Streaks. <laughs> <laughs> Ew, David. <laughs> I don't want to go on vacation. I'm going to lose my streaks. Yeah. <laughs> Mom, I don't want to go to Hawaii. Right. This is bull crap. <laughs> oh, I so, went off on a tangent. I'm it's sorry. Okay. So, Sarah, what is, what is, as we wrap this up, what is, what are some, what's the good news of all of this? Like, what is the hope that we can have after? the fear and the unknown that is technology, social media, social dilemma. Like how do we walk out of here? Like almost excited, but feeling more prepared. Sure. Technology is so amazing. You know, I can walk into my house and like my lights will turn on to what I want to turn on and like my music will turn on what I want. I controlling my sprinklers for my phone. Right. It's amazing. There's so much you can do and so much you can learn. Like I said, right. you can learn marketing on YouTube. You can learn how to fix your car on YouTube. You can do all of these awesome things. Your kids can code these amazing programs. You know, my 11-year-old is constantly on scratch. Ciphering money out of your bank account already. Obviously. <laughs> <laughs> And like, it's just amazing the things they can do. You know, my daughter is an artist and she can draw these just amazing drawings when I don't have to buy colored pencils and I don't have to buy like all of these different like brushes and things like that. And she can create it. You must have like an iPad. A Samsung Galaxy. Okay, hold on. That's one place where I, I cannot be swayed. Nobody has a tablet as good as the iPad. It's okay. Hold on. I haven't used another one for a couple years, (laughs) but for a long time, nobody could touch that. The iPad, as far as just how smooth it was and quick. It's true. I will say here is like, I'm going to put my knife in my own back. Um, I am going to be buying my daughter an iPad (laughs) soon. Let's stop it. Let's stop (laughs) it right now. I have one. Uh, We can be done. I've been using my laptop a lot more lately than my, like, Instead of surfing like on my iPad, sure, it is kind of. See, that's what I was talking about about creating markets for things that we don't need. Right. Of course, I don't need a MacBook Pro either. Holy right. crap! I look at the, my email and <laughs> hockey stick websites, but <laughs> but it's it's funny because they created a market for something that we really did not need. Yeah. Like he has both out in front of him right now. Right. Like yeah. why? He, uh, and his you know? Yeah. So I can write a note if I need right. to. Yeah. <laughs> I mean, you could do that on a piece of paper. But then it wouldn't be saved digitally. Exactly. <laughs> no, it's it's amazing. It's and good. I'm not making fun because, of yeah. course, I have one too. But it that's to me where the, the scary part is, I guess, right. is we don't really have a lot of control over what's necessary, what's not like... 
Right. Once we see it and it looks awesome, we want it. And then the whole status symbol sure. thing too, right? And so there is, I just want to make sure, and this is another question I did want to ask you, and we don't have to go down this road because maybe it opens up a big can of worms, but like nobody likes the government. Yeah. <laughs> Right? Oh no, where are we going with it? But I know. well no, like wait, wait, wait. When you have these companies that are richer, like they said in Social Dilemma, like these companies have limitless, right? Yeah. Power and dollars. Right. And and they're wanting to self govern. Yes. Sure. It, I mean, and so at some point where does government intervention have to happen? Yeah. Because all they care about, and I don't care what anybody says. Where's the says, checks and balances? Yeah. All they care about is money. Yeah. They're like a for-profit organization. They, right. And totally. there's, and that's okay to a point, right? But it's... The question is who gets to decide what that point is. Yes. I mean, it's a fine line because as far as they're concerned, they'll just keep pushing the limit until, you know, casinos are no different. Right. It, it's all, you know, and we should have the choice to kind of you know, do what we want to do as far as what we buy and what we, you know, yeah. all that, you know, but it's, how do you control it? Because yeah. they're so powerful. Right. I mean, like you say your age restriction is 13 yet there's nine year olds and 10 year olds and whatever. Yeah, and they don't care. On, like they're legally covered with their little. Right. You know, like what can they do to, you know, better enforce that age? Yeah, restriction? They don't care about your kids. No, no, right. they absolutely do not. So, um, but yeah, so you're totally right. I think they're, is a need for some more government oversight right. uh, you know like hold them accountable for kids that are under 13 on their platform because that is against the law like sure it's copa restrictions so but um, how do you penalize them right exactly because you could say you have to pay a billion dollars and like okay three two one we just made that much right <laughs> <laughs> here you go <laughs> you know Chump change like they can't control so much yeah. of Everything is controlled through these big companies that right. it's... You well, know. how do you even find the <laughs> right. violations? You know, uh, it's right. almost impossible. Yep. You know, just... <laughs> Good luck fighting the Terminator. Have some pedophiles do it. They'll yeah. find all the younger ones. <laughs> oh, <laughs> my gosh. Isn't that like... And that, I guess... And it, it's just like... I mean, drug... It's like you're going to... If you want it, you're going to find it. Right. Right? So... To a point, yes, you don't want the government getting involved and just shutting things down. And right, I mean, monopolies are a little bit scary, but we've had monopolies for years. It's not like that's really any different. But yeah, it would just be nice to be able to say, "I want to get on the internet, and I don't want anybody like looking at, like using me just even getting on to like do a church lesson." Sure, right? Like they see it all. Yeah. And it would be nice to be able to at least maybe not shut down the other side. Right. But at least make it so I have the control to shut that off. Yeah, yeah, yeah. If I want to use it. Nope, I can but I guess it's hard because well, I'm I using ask, their browser. Well, it right? would be, yeah. Can I ask you why? Cool. It's just a principle thing, right? Like it sucks. I mean, if you think of the social dilemma, like I can't drive anywhere, shop anywhere, have my phone near me. Like they hear everything. So well, you, I think giving well, us a little bit of control. You can. You just no, you can't. Sure, you can. No, you can't. Don't have a smartphone. Okay. Don't drive a smart car. That's what I'm saying, right? So by having those things, we are just no one's ever told us that if you want this truck, this is what you're trading. Yes. If okay. you want this you're truck, trading. you give us permission to, you know, sell your information on where you're driving. You it's in that terms and conditions it, right. thing that you didn't read. But totally it's like right. Two pages <laughs> it, long. It is. Off you <laughs> sign. You just have to press a button now. So <laughs> who is going to step in and be that? You know, you totally agreed. Yeah. Who's going to be fine. that person that helps us have that option? Yeah. Because at some point it's going to go overboard. Sure. Right. Like if we allow drug dealers on school campuses. Right. You know what I mean? Like they're going to go. They don't care about your kids. They want to just sell drugs. Right. And to me, there's not that is I hate the, the verb like or the word scary. Sure. But. That is kind of scary because yeah. <laughs> basically what we're telling ourselves is you just need to get to the point where it's like, dude, just deal with it because there's no escaping it. <laughs> that kind of sucks. Is that the answer? Just Yes, kind of, it's the answer. Just to kind of be numb to it, but like it is what it is. No, I mean, I just think we live in a world where there is no true privacy and like not that we just have to, you know, the liar, liar, um, 
scene where he's just like, just gonna take it. <laughs> um, I'm a huge movie person. I love that movie. <laughs> you have huge boobs. <laughs> <laughs> well, that's because everyone in the building has been really nice to me. <laughs> But yeah, <laughs> so it's not like that. But you know, there's so much technology. So any time you're outside, you know, I might not have a phone, but you have a phone, and you have a phone. You know, there's if I'm gonna make a stink somewhere at like at a store, I guarantee somebody's gonna record it and put it online. Right. You know, there's no private interactions, and I think that's also something that I teach my kids because I talk to them about, hey, I'm monitoring everything you're doing. And that's like what's going to be when, you know, you're older. I'm, I'm at when least you're telling you older. about it. Right. right. Nobody else is going to tell you they're doing it, but they're doing it. Yeah. But so I, I tell them nothing you do or say on the Internet is ever truly private. That's such a great way to talk to your kids about monitoring. Yeah. As opposed to being like the nosy. Like, I'm being parent. monitored. Right. It's like right now. It's like right get now. used to it. You do something stupid. I'm going to know about it. You get older, you do something stupid. Someone's going to know about it. True. Yeah. It's very true. Yeah. So tell like, the BYU football team that. Yeah. <laughs> Please. It's like See, my mission president. Like, we don't problem. ever have to look for them because they always take pictures of it. Right. Totally. It, no. <laughs> you're absolutely right. I mean, well, and maybe this is a little too serious, but like the dude that shot the guy in Provo yeah. at the protest, right. like there were 17 different angles of right. that. Like, dude, you're in broad daylight shooting into a car. Like, you're done. Yeah. And he was arrested the next day. So, I mean, it truly is. I mean, there's really nowhere you can go where you're not right being recorded. Exactly. You know, and so like it's Crazy. not it's not that, you know, we just have to get used to it, you know, but that is reality. Right. And it's well, as long more as we of a mindset, create the market yeah. for it too. Right. Yeah, because you're right. As long as we want all of this stuff, right. That is what comes with it. Yeah. No, you're right. I know and and I know. It would just I just wonder at what point does it go too far? Sure. Like, because the, the bad thing about that, there's only one way to fix that, and it's the wrong way, <laughs> which is the government. Right. Because they're going to come in and just ruin the party. And then no one smart enough in the government to take care of this. Uh, no. no. <laughs> well, and, I mean, that's why I was like Trump saying that he was going to ban TikTok. I'm like, that's ridiculous. Right. Because it's a it's not even based in the United States. In he doesn't give a crap about TikTok. No. That's just voter based stuff, right? Right, now. and it's just like, like COVID you're not, nineteen. Right. No, I'm just kidding. <laughs> <laughs> Everyone's gonna be like, oh, uh, oh, uh. dang. No, you didn't. He went there. He went there. <laughs> but yeah, I mean, it's just ridiculous to say that a government organization has that much control over a private company, right? Um, because they shouldn't be able to tell you that you can't download that app. Like, For sure. Yeah. Well, I mean, the drug debate's the same thing. Right. Right? Like, we're all adults. Right. Like, you're just trying to control something, and, you, you know, you end up making money off the laws. Right. So, I mean, yes, to a point, it's the same thing. But it's just the recording everything that worries me. Uh, so, that's that's where I kind of differ. Like, you... I, I did agree that it is listening. Sure. But I don't necessarily believe that they're keeping recordings of like everybody's interactions. Right. It's just listening for keywords and doing things based on those keywords. Sure. So it's not like little triggers. Right. Exactly. And, you know, it's just programming. Yeah. <laughs> bomb, 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 bomb. <laughs> you can't say bomb on a plane. <laughs> See, we need to just do a whole movie one. Oh my gosh! Oh, you and I would get along great. Yeah, I, I. You like, can milk I have anything the... with nipple, nipples, Greg. <laughs> can you, I've got. Can you milk me? <laughs> I've got nipples, Greg. Can you milk me? <laughs> okay, I'm no, sorry. I have no. I have a T-shirt that my friend bought me that says, "I speak fluent movie quotes." <laughs> That's awesome. So, Sarah, on your website, we've talked about a lot of apps and technologies, like. Is all of that there? Yeah. So I have um, on the menu of my website, there's a resources drop down um, and literally everything, like all the apps I recommend, all the products it's I recommend. Awesome. I was looking at it just a minute ago. Oh, that page that. Yep. Oh, okay. Well, just like I just went to your page and yeah, just, I mean, seriously, like 10 different things I've been wondering about were just right there. Like circle. 
Oh, yeah. I bought Circle like a year and a half ago, and it's still in the box. Oh, don't just put it take take yeah. it back. It, but it's it's cool because I mean pinwheel. It's a, like, do you have an app? Like a family tech app? That's what we need. No, oh, I do need. Wouldn't an that app. be awesome just yeah. to be able to like hold on, honey? Somebody me give me a lot app. of money, and then right? I can get it. Deli- Somebody needs yeah. to do that, Andrew. That'd be great. new investment opportunity. Can you- <laughs> Done. Like that. Perfect. I mean, wouldn't that be cool for parents to just kind of have that one stop shop? I would love that. Yeah. To be able to find, like, wait, okay. So remind us, what's your website? It's familytechzone.com. Okay. But if you go to family tech biz, family tech.biz, um, it's got, or you can just Google family tech. I'm the first result. Oh. Google, bing it. Or you can just bing it. Go that home crap. and bing it. <laughs> <laughs> or you can just bing that crap. Yeah. And then. <laughs> Staying up to date with you. Are you active on Instagram then? Yeah. Um, so I usually do a tech tip of the day on my Instagram stories. Um, and then I post on um, just the regular post from time to time. Okay. So We got to have a 2.0 soon. Yes. Like this is, this has I'm been happy awesome. Too, yeah. We're going to get so many questions about. We are. Pinwheel and Gap and the different phones. You know, we're going to get tons of stuff. Yeah. Right. No. And yeah, there's so many different things to talk about that there really is <laughs> it's endless yeah right <laughs> i usually You're never not... run out of content That's yeah <laughs> i can see that just go buy an iphone you'll be okay yeah. well and we're and we should all be very <laughs> andrew grow Excuse up me. no <laughs> we should all be very grateful to have someone like you out there kind of because you are i mean you're watching our backs right and it's I, cool I that the so, big yeah. companies are it, they, they it makes you feel good it. that they appreciate it and they want you involved because that does show a level of them they actually caring care. about their users. Right, <laughs> their users. <laughs> <laughs> but, uh, I mean, yes, that's and that's what we want to see. We want to see these companies care about or give us options as parents to right. protect our kids, but teach them. Like, I've learned a lot. Right. The socializing part is really interesting to me, like just helping them grow into yeah. it yeah. instead of just cut it off or cut it out right it's true right anyway well thank you so much for coming yeah of course this was awesome and we'll have to circle around again yeah no worries android for life here we go that's right (laughs) 